Ladies and gentlemen, this is Reacts, and this is what if we cover the Sahara with solar panels for the channel Real Life Floor. Yes, another Real Life Floor video. Yeah, Sahara. Sahara is massive, right? Really massive. Something like uh, I don't know, ch size of China or something. Yeah, I remember Bill Nye saying one of the podcasts that if we cover entire France, you know, with solar panels, like every house has a pa so solar panel on top of it, entire France, not even, you know, Sahara or China type thing, just France. France is big, but not that big comparing the entire world. So if we do that, we can power entire world by just that. But the only issue is here, obviously, that, you know, storing all that energy and transporting throughout the world. But solar panel, you know, people f people have this misconception that solar panel does not, you know, give you that much power. I mean, that's not true. Like I said, if, if France, you know, area of France is enough to, you know, give power to the entire world, something like Sahara, you would have excess power by then. So if you could, you know, put solar panels throughout the Sahara, and find a way to store and transport throughout the world that would be awesome that just like you don't need any other fossil fuel energy or anything like that that would that would cover everything cars and every energy needs that would be awesome right and no you know when the sun goes down that does not mean the power will go out you know there's a you know storage system so yeah remember people, if you like my reaction don't forget to like subscribe check out the reaction today there's a link in the description check out the cards over play check out the end cards and yeah let's watch this one this video is made possible by Brilliant. Learn something new every day for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash real life lore. More energy will fall on the world's deserts in six hours than the entire world will consume over the next year. The Sahara Desert is well known for being the world's largest hot desert, but it's probably a lot bigger than you even realize. It's nearly the same size as China, yeah, it spans it across 10 different countries in 3 different time zones, and it gets absolutely massacred by sunlight. This is a map that shows annual sunshine hours across the world. There are some notable hotspots in North America, South America, and Southern Africa, but nowhere gets as much as the Sahara Desert. Most of this China-sized chunk of land gets more than 3,600 hours of sunlight a year, and within that big chunk is this other chunk that gets more than 4,000 hours a year. For reference, that's nearly four times... See, there you go. France. This space alone, if you put solar panel everywhere, could power the entire earth. This is not me saying it, Bill Nye said it. So, you know, don't get pissed off at me if this is wrong. But yeah, you know, if you put solar panel here, it could power entire earth. Imagine putting solar panel in entire Sahara. Seems the amount of annual sunlight that Germany gets. Most of this is because the Sahara Desert is A, pretty much directly along the Tropic of Cancer, which means the sun for a lot of the year is pretty much directly over it, and yeah. B, clouds pretty much never form or even exist over the entire desert, which means all that sunlight is never interrupted. The Sahara, consequently, is the best location anywhere on Earth to place solar panels and develop solar farms. So it then begs the question, what if we covered the entire desert with solar panels? How much energy would we actually be able to produce, and how would this change our planet? Let's take a deep dive. For starters... Yeah, so that would change a lot of economical thing too, right? Like lots of African countries that are poor will not be poor anymore. The 10 countries that you talk about, the very spans, all would get lots of money because they would be supplying power throughout the world. So the landscape would change a lot, like who's rich and who's not, suddenly. So yeah. Let's begin here. I think Elon Musk is trying to do some uh, something in the Australia, I guess. He's creating some kind of a, you know, massive farm type of thing of solar panel, creating some kind of a technology to store it. I don't know. This is the Wersazet Solar Power Station in Morocco, the world's largest concentrated solar power plant currently in existence in a marvel of modern engineering. Once fully completed and operational, the plant will take up an area of 25 square kilometers and be capable of producing 582 megawatts of electricity. It will even be capable of storing solar energy in the form of superheated molten salt, which allows for further production of electricity even into the night. After investing more than $9 billion into their solar energy objective, Morocco aims to create four additional plants similar to this one in the Sahara that, that will shit. collectively create more than 2,000 megawatts of electricity production, which will be enough to provide for roughly 38% of all of Morocco's annual electricity needs. 
This project will transform Morocco into the world's leading solar energy state. And as the only African country that currently has a power cable link to Europe, much of this energy will be exported for profit to the countries of the European Union. But all of this energy is created from just five relatively small plants. Seriously. What happens when we scale things up a bit and think bigger? One of the few organizations thinking about Sahara solar energy production in the future is the German energy company Desertec, which happens to be an investor of the Moroccan solar energy project. According to their research and data taken from the German Aerospace Center, a solar panel array of just this small size in the Sahara could power 100% of Germany's entire Whoa. electricity needs. An array of this size could power the entire European Union, while an array of just this size could power the entire world's modern electricity needs. At there you go, that's like the size of France, right? I mean, that makes sense. Approximately 18 trillion watts, give or take a bit. Considering that a typical solar panel generates roughly 350 watts of power, this Earth-powering array would encompass around 51.4 billion solar panels, and it would be roughly the same size as the U.S. state of New Mexico. Quite a large amount of land, but it's nothing when compared with the vastness of the Sahara, that also happens to be incredibly sparsely populated. Only about two and a half million people live across the Sahara, which means yeah, that its, it's population density is on a par with Siberia, which further means that it's possible to set up huge solar farms like this without too much of a negative impact on the local inhabitants. Yeah. The Desert Tech project doesn't quite intend on transforming the entire Sahara into a solar farm, but it's still quite ambitious. The general idea is to set up a series of massive solar farms across the Sahara's perimeter and deeper into the Middle East. Once constructed, this collection of solar farms will provide for the majority of Africa's and the Middle East's electricity needs while shipping any excess power across cables to Europe that could supply as much as 15% of the continent's entire electricity needs. This is a real-life plan that's undergone significant amounts of research and investment. Yeah, there's, there's real logistics you have to think about in order to transfer, you know, transport all this energy. So, you know, if we can build a massive, you know, uh, solar, solar panel farm here or something like that and, you know, supply entire world and, and keep en excess energy, I guess. But the point is how to transport it. I mean, we don't have the storage, uh, you know, best storage, you know, all the batteries right now, it's pretty old technology and it's not that reliable. So if somebody comes upon with some great electric storing uh, technology, that would transform all these things because then you can create a massive farm somewhere like this here or even in Australia somewhere and just, you know, store it in massive batteries and transport it to the other, other countries, basically. But why are they only planning on building solar farms around the Sahara's perimeter? Well, while there's lots of obvious benefits to constructing solar farms in the empty Sahara, there's also lots of problems. First of all, the Sahara's emptiness itself is both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it means that almost nobody will have to be relocated or moved off of their land. But on the other hand, there isn't any infrastructure to actually get the massive amounts of supplies into place in any kind of cost-effective manner. I mean, look at this map. There's only like four roads that even stretch across the Sahara from the north to the south. There are huge, empty pockets of land across the desert. I'm surprised there are roads to begin with that could cross it like the Boca. Okay. ...without a single road at all. And some of these areas, like this northwestern pocket of Chad, are more than 600 kilometers away from the nearest road. Transporting billions of solar panels to a remote area like this will necessitate building countless new expensive highways or railroads to get them there. And that's why Desert Tech is only planning on constructing plants around the Sahara. But let's forget all of that for a moment and just think about the cost of the solar panels themselves in a Sahara-sized array. A pretty average 350-watt solar panel typically costs anywhere between $200 and $450 once fully installed on a residential roof today. Since we know that it's going to be expensive transporting and installing all of them in the middle of one of the world's most remote locations, we're going to stick with the high-cost estimate here and tack on an additional $300 for delivery and infrastructure fees and $250 more for installation fees. Conveniently, this math makes the total cost for each 350-watt panel exactly $1,000. So from there, you can figure out pretty quickly that the 51.4 billion solar panels needed to fit inside of our New Mexico-sized array that'll power the entire planet will cost a cool 51.4 trillion US dollars. 
For reference, Damn. that's approximately 60% of the entire world's GDP, but yeah, it no. would enable us to immediately switch all of our electricity over to renewable solar, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, nobody's gonna do that. They're like, okay, let's spend that many trillion onto this project, even though it's common sense and it would, you know, it would have much better benefits in the future. Nobody's spending that much money. All right, then. Now let's just assume that we've turned on infinite money and we expanded upon this by filling up the entire Sahara Desert with solar panels. What is going to happen now? Well, for starters, if we assume that the solar panels are 100% efficient, the entire Sahara Desert will probably now be producing somewhere around the neighborhood of 1.3 million terawatt hours of electricity Damn. per year. So, to put that number into perspective, the entire contemporary human species consumed about 173,000 terawatt hours of energy in 2019. And that's not just electricity, that's all energy consumed for everything we did that year. A Sahara Desert covered in solar panels would generate more than seven times the amount of energy that all of the nearly eight billion humans of the world collectively consume. Yeah, we'll have to drive more cars to compensate for that. Zoom right now. Obviously, this would present revolutionary changes to what mankind could be capable of, and not just even closer to a Type 1 Kardashev-style civilization. Seriously. But this overwhelming... I mean, look, excess energy could really help out lots of projects, projects that people want to do, and also, you know, uh, would make living much better. Like, we don't have to conserve energy anymore because we have seven times more of that power given to humanity by harnessing the entire Sahara would also come with some significant costs. The black surfaces of the solar panels dotting the Sahara will of course absorb most of the sunlight hitting the Sahara. Only a tiny fraction of that incoming energy will actually be converted into electricity, while the overwhelming majority will be returned back to the environment as heat. In turn, this heat will trigger a sort of feedback loop in which the heat emitted by the solar panels would create a steep temperature differential between the land and the surrounding oceans. Yeah. This will ultimately lower the surface air pressure and cause moist air to rise and condense into clouds and rain across the desert. So, by covering the entire Sahara with solar panels, we'll also unwittingly be terraforming the desert Sahara into a green Sahara at the same time. In okay. some ways, this will be good, because it will open up a massive amount of land the size of China to colonization, human settlement, and critically for the emerging economies of North Africa, extensive economic development for their countries and their people. Yeah, but in this scenario, we covered the entire side of its solar panels, right? But in other ways, this will be really bad. The Amazon rainforest over in South America is extensively fed and fertilized by dust coming over from the Sahara that gets blown across the Atlantic, while the Atlantic ecosystems themselves also benefit from this fertile dust as well. Removing all of the sands of the Sahara Desert could create a cascade of unforeseen events yeah. that could wipe out entire ecosystems in the Atlantic, the Amazon, and probably beyond. It's and a butterfly effect whenever we mess with things like that. Change an entire desert into, you know, I guess rainforest or something like that. Yeah, it's gonna have massive effects in the future create an epic climate catastrophe the likes we have never seen before. It's a chain in summary, all covering the, the entire Sahara with solar panels would be epic, but it's also not feasible, it's probably pretty dangerous, and it's not even necessary either. Yeah, yeah. We only need solar panels covering the area of New Mexico to meet all 8 billion humans' modern electricity needs, and they don't even need to be all in the same place. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't need to do that. I mean, you know, you could put solar panels in Australia, you can put it in, you know, the Sahara and different deserts too. All the different continents, you know, put a bit of solar panel arrays here and there, and there'll be more than enough. You don't have to put all in one place. It's also a bit, uh, you know, uh, like some kind of a catastrophe happens, the entire world loses power. So it's not a, you know, more efficient way of doing it anyway. It's, it's best to, you know, spread it around. They can be spread out across all of the world's deserts or anywhere where it's sunny. And hopefully by the end of the century, we'll have made some pretty decent progress here. Now, maybe you're sitting here wondering how solar panels and solar energy actually work. In order to help myself better understand that very thing for ah. this video, I took the full solar energy course that's Yeah, people go to brilliant.org for slash real life floor and support this channel. This is a great channel. I love, you know, all the content that this channel features, especially recently. These are some great videos that in the recently he has done. 
Yeah, solar energy. I remember the Bill Nye's thing, like I said, you know, area of France is enough to supply entire Earth. So, you know, you don't need to, I guess, you know, put solar panels in, a, you know, entire Sahara Desert. Like you say, it could create some kind of chain reaction that would screw everything up around the planet. So it's best to, you know, put arrays here and there and spread out around the world. But solar panels would definitely do the work, right? All the energy needs would be, you know, met with just solar panels. And why not do it? It's, it's the best way to do things, no pollution, no nothing. You don't have to think about conserving energy anymore. Yeah. This will happen, I think, in the future. Depends on how much future, which politicians comes in the way. God knows. But yeah, it will happen in the future. Alright, people. That was what if we cover the Sahara with solar panels. But channel real life floor. If you like my next like, subscribe. Check out the next Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards. Please check out the end cards. And I'll see you next time.